A new investigation from The Intercept is shedding light ha on how an artificial intelligence company called Data Miner packaged Twitter information about Black Lives Matter protests and then passed that on to local law enforcement. So Sam Biddle is uh, with us now to break down his investigation into data miner. This is so fascinating, Sam. And I, before we get into it, I want to tell people that, you know, data miner is used by a lot of different companies. CBS News is one of those companies. We use this to sort of track breaking news. Um, so I'm going to get you to explain what da data miner does and you know how it can be used differently for say a news organization versus law enforcement data miners whole mission is taking the total universe of um, social media particularly Twitter and making it um, comprehensible and, and picking out the events that are happening um, that are springing up really before they are necessarily public or reported somewhere and relaying that information to customers. Those customers could be um, CBS News or it could be the FBI. And I think the significance really depends on who is getting that information. So Sam, uh, can you also explain the relationship between Data Miner and Twitter and how essential it is to this piece. Uh, explain how it works and what do you mean when you say that Data Miner has access to the fire hose? Firehouse, so, firehouse. Uh, the, the, the fire, fire hose is a, um, uh, a sort of uh, a slang term for the ultimate level of access that Twitter can provide another company. It provides you with the ability to basically search all tweets at once um, and to get access to new tweets as soon as they're sent. So um, it, it's about as good as another company can have it um, uh, in terms of access to your tweets uh, outside of Twitter itself. And it's it's very, I, you know, I should note that it's expensive. It's something that you have to um, pay for. Um, in data miners case, um, uh, Twitter actually owned a small piece of the company uh, for many, many years up until very recently. Uh, which you know also gave them some uh, 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 privileged terms, I think. So let's look at some of the Black Lives Matter protests that 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 popped up. You know, these are all public posts. Um, they're they're you know private users, not you know they're not sort of people like me and Vlad, but they're all public posts. Anyone could have access to it. I mean, you know, how is this different than say following a bunch of people that are community activists and seeing what they're posting? Well, I think that, um, you know, if someone like uh, uh, yourself or myself or any other member of the media were following um, members uh, of the Black Lives Matter movement or organizers from that movement, um, our intentions would be a little different than those of police, or uh, whether they're federal police or local police or state police, um, all of whom use data miner. Um, I, I think that, you know, yes, these are public tweets, but the analogy I would use is um, if the police were sending out photographers to um, capture information about the activities and locations of protesters in public, uh, I think it would be hard to argue that doesn't constitute surveillance. Um, I think surveillance absolutely can and does take place in public. So Twitter and data miners' defense that um, all this stuff is public anyway, um, I think doesn't quite hold up. Uh, we've also seen reports, Sam, of police and FBI agents using uh, those geolocations that data miner shares to police in order to find protesters once the demonstrations are over. Um, have you found evidence of that? Is data miner responsible for the data once it is shared? And is this uh, potentially putting the safety of protesters at risk? So Twitter no longer allows um, data miner to directly um, capture the geolocation from ins that's embedded inside a tweet. Um, they, cut off, they cut off that access four years ago. But what they do permit, um, or sorry, what Data Miner does provide is they have uh, a staff of employees who will find these tweets and then can manually add a location when, before they send it off to the police. So they can say, you know, if there's a tweet that says, group of protesters spotted on, on uh, you know, in front of this store or whatever, um, data miner can manually say, by the way, this is the location. Um, to answer your question about accountability, uh, I think data miner would say that, um, that you know, they, they, uh, uh, that they have some ways of determining that no abuse takes place once the data is shared. But 
there's no meaningfully what meaningful way to control uh, what police do with that information once they have it in their inboxes. It's just it, it's not practical. I mean, it. If it wasn't for the fact that law enforcement was doing this, it would almost seem a little like stalking. Like it seems like something that would be against Twitter's policy, when it's sort of their, some of their basic policies. Um, how how is it not? Uh, you know, that is a a fantastic question and one that I wish that Twitter um, would answer. Uh, Twitter's uh, both Twitter and Data Miner maintain that this is not surveillance. Um, and when I ask how that's not surveillance, they just say. It's not surveillance. Um, data miner actually told me that uh, the reason uh, police in Minneapolis were being alerted by the company to um, uh, peaceful protesters who were assembled on a, um, a street corner uh, in, the, in the aftermath of George Floyd's uh, murder, um, they said that they had sent that information to the police because it was a traffic problem and there was a blocked intersection and it had nothing to do with um, the fact that there was a protest going on there. You know, again, it, I, I don't. I don't think many people would find that very convincing, especially not as um, a defense against uh, allegations of surveillance. Um, but Twitter does technically have a strict no surveillance policy. Um, they appear just not to be enforcing it. So Sam, I guess through the course of your reporting, um, did you find that this is a case of police departments overstepping their boundaries uh, and infringing on the rights of civilians? Well, you know, I, I think it's it's really important to um, demand uh, transparency around this stuff. I mean, I, I to, to answer your question, we simply don't know um, what the police do with this data. Uh, we can imagine what the police might want to do if they were able to get real time, very accurate information about where protesters are heading and what uh, they're doing there. I mean, I think that we saw plenty of evidence during um, those weeks of protest about how violently police can suppress constitutionally protected speech. Um, the question is, uh, are they going to use uh, the service that Data Miner provides uh, to crack down like that? We don't know, but it's a question that everyone should want to know, especially if you're using Twitter or any other social media uh, platform to organize or to uh, discuss these issues. All right, really interesting reporting. Uh, Sam, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on and sharing that reporting with us. My pleasure. All right, CBS News has reached out to uh, Twitter and Data Miner for a statement. We haven't heard from Twitter, but we did receive a statement from Data Miner. It says, in part, the article published in The Intercept is baseless and false. It goes